Hey everybody, this is GGB, and guess what? We got a victory, guys. We finally got one. We got one today, yesterday. We got a Friday victory, which means now I sit at two points, which means I have to get both Saturday and Sundays right, or I get the biggest upset of the day on Saturday, and Sunday just has, doesn't have an upset. Guys, I'm freaking out here. I'm I'm legitimately scared. I'm not going to hit the goal for this week. Um, I got to hit four. Um, so let's go over what happened yesterday. We had one ranked matchup, right? Xavier was facing number 24. Five Xavier was facing number 24, UConn. And by my standards, even though technically it wasn't an upset because Xavier was, in fact, favored by one point, Xavier did win. It counts as an upset for me, and I sit at two points. But that loss for UConn made him fall to 7-5 and five in conference. And now sits in 4th place instead of 3rd place in the Big East. So huge loss there for UConn. Again, you can definitely catch up to Marquette. Um, but you can't also handle losing anymore because Creighton's only one game in the win column behind you. And uh, Xavier's only one game in the loss column behind you as well. So, I mean, this was a big one. This was a biggie. Um, this was a great win for Marquette, though. And a huge win for Xavier, by the way. Xavier moved out of the tie for Seton Hall. A loss would have fallen him behind Seton Hall into his tie for fourth to last with St. John's, which was a big game. This huge game for uh, the Musketeers, and they pulled it out. So congrats to them. But let's go over all the games we have today. We're going to start with the SEC game. So let's go talk about the SEC real quick. We have three games going on in the SEC. One second. Um, 11 o'clock, we have number, we have Texas A&M, which is at 15 and 9, traveling to number one Auburn, which is at, <coughs> sorry guys, 22 and 2, uh, Auburn favored by 13 points on ESPN. Um, like also we have 3 o'clock, we have Florida, which is at 16 and 8, traveling to number 5, Kentucky, which is at 20 and 4, Kentucky favored by 9.5 points on ESPN. And 5 o'clock, we have Vanderbilt, which is at 13 and 10, traveling to number 19, Tennessee, which is at 17 and 6. <coughs> oh my god, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, Fantasy Fair by 11.5 points on SEC Network. So, obviously huge game. If you're looking at for the Texas A&M Aggies, again, Texas A&M has the longest losing streak in the SEC right now with losing seven straight games. But with a win here, you can come very close to getting back into this territory. If LSU, Alabama, and Vanderbilt all lose and Texas A&M wins, then Texas A&M can be in a tie for seventh place in the SEC, despite having lost seven straight basketball games. If you're also looking at it for Auburn's perspective, Texas A&M with a loss, this would be bad because if South Carolina wins and Missouri wins, then uh, South Carolina and Missouri could both pass Texas A&M and Texas A&M could fall into, even if Ole Miss wins, if Ole Miss wins, Missouri wins, and South Carolina wins, Texas A&M could conceivably tie fall into a tie for second to last place in the SEC, which is just not a good place to be at all if you're Texas A&M. Uh, on the other hand, Auburn with a loss and a Kentucky win would be in suddenly a tie for first place in the SEC, something that wouldn't even have been conceivable heading into this week. But Arkansas pulling off the upset in overtime, and if Texas A&M can pull it off here, this would put Auburn in a very bad predicament and it would give Kentucky an excellent chance here. Talking about Kentucky, Kentucky with a loss could fall to 9-3, and three, and with an Arkansas and Tennessee win, uh, Kentucky would be tied for second place with two other basket, uh, basketball teams in the Razorbacks and the Volunteers. Florida, on the other hand, with a win can move to 7-5, and five. Um, can't really move anywhere with a loss, also falls, also falls to 6-6. Six and six. I don't know if Mississippi State plays today, Mississippi State does play today, they play LSU, so interesting basketball game there. If Mississippi State is to win that one, and LSU, uh, if Mississippi State is to win that one, um, and Mississippi State, I'm sorry, I got distracted, if Mississippi State wins that one, and Florida loses, Florida would fall out of where they sit currently in fifth place, and fall into sixth place, so that's the downside there, if you're a Florida fan, also, Alabama and Vanderbilt could both tie you for that sixth place, if Mississippi State wins, you lose, and also Alabama and Vanderbilt win, which Alabama plays Arkansas tomorrow, so that's, that's likely a loss for them. And Vanderbilt plays Tennessee tomorrow, which is also likely a loss for them. So Florida's probably good with a loss even. Just as long as Mississippi State doesn't uh, beat LSU, they'll be fine. Although if LSU 
beats Mississippi State. They're in a tie with LSU. So anyways, there, there's there's some downsides definitely for losing for Florida. Um, and then Vanderbilt, obviously Vanderbilt with a win can move to six and six and with a Florida loss and LSU loss and an Alabama loss. Actually, ideally, I guess if you're uh so Vanderbilt, I think you would want LSU to beat Mississippi State um, and then Alabama to lose and Florida lose. Therefore, you would be in a tie for fifth place in the SEC with Florida, LSU, and you, right? Vanderbilt with a loss can fall to five and seven. If Texas A&M wins, then you could enter a tie for that uh, for that spot with your Vanderbilt, which currently sits in a tie for seventh place right now, um, but currently sits in ninth place. So with a loss, you could fall that ninth place by yourself or a ninth place tie with Texas A&M and South Carolina, depending on what happens. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting, definitely, for sure, that Vanderbilt game is going to be somewhat pretty important. Uh, then moving on to the Big 12. The Big 12, you got 11 o'clock, we have number 20, Texas, which is the 18 and 6, travel to number 10, Baylor, which is 20 and 4. Baylor favored by 5.5 points on... ESPN 2 at 12 o'clock. We have Oklahoma, which is at 14 and 10. Traveling to number 8, Kansas, which is at 19 and 4. Kansas Fair with 10.5 points on CBS. Um, any other Big 12? Okay, we do have one more Big 12 game, I believe, and that's uh, 3 o'clock. We have TC, which is at 16 and 5. Traveling to number 19, Texas, number 9, Texas Tech, which is at 18 and 6. Texas Tech Fair at 10.5 points on ESPN. Plus. So, in the Big 12. You got Kansas sits at eight and two. So Kansas with a loss and Baylor with a win. Baylor can move into first place in the Big 12. Obviously, Kansas with a win stays in first place in the Big 12. Um, uh, what else? Okay, uh, Baylor. Baylor with a loss can fall to eight and four. And if Texas Tech and Texas both win their respective games, which Texas would have to beat Baylor for Baylor to get a loss, and Texas Tech beats TCU, they would all sit at 8-4 and four in conference and would be in a tie for second place in the Big 12. That's the interesting thing going on there. Obviously, if Texas was to lose that game, they fall to 7-5. and five. Um, I believe 7-5, seven, 7 out of 12 basketball games. Oof, actually... That, this could be bad if you're Texas. If Texas loses this game to Baylor, which is a possibility, and TCU somehow pulls the opposite against Texas Tech, TCU would actually move past Texas Tech and Texas into third place in the, in the Big 12. TCU is also with a loss, would fall to 5-5. Five and five. It would get them further behind, but they're still not moving at a fifth place. They're not falling down any. Oklahoma with a win can break the tie, which right now they have with Kansas State and Oklahoma State, at least for now. Kansas State plays Iowa State tomorrow, so that'll be an interesting game. And Oklahoma State plays West Virginia, who sits at 3-7. and seven. So it is possible that Oklahoma doesn't move at all, but if Oklahoma, if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're watching the Kansas game and then also rooting for Iowa State and West Virginia to beat the Cowboys and the Wildcats. Um, basically, that's what's going on in the Big 12. Nothing else really to it. That moves us on to the... Uh, the the Big East, uh, twelve o'clock. We have Seton Hall, which is at fifteen and seven, traveling to. I'm sorry. Uh, Seton Hall is traveling to number fifteen Villanova. Villanova favored by nine and a half points on Fox. And uh, what else we have in the Big East? Also, probably have Marquette playing at three thirty. We have number eighteen Marquette traveling to Butler. Marquette favored by two and a half points on FS1. Uh, what else we have at 5.30, DePaul, which is at 12 and 10. Traveling to number 11, Providence, which is at 20 and 2. Providence favored by 9.5 points on FS1. So what's going on in the Big East? Um, not all that complicated. Obviously, Providence, with a win, stays in first place in the Big East. With a loss, it's it's likely still Providence as they would have won 10 out of 12, which is 5 out of 6, which is... An 83% win percentage. Villanova with a win can move to 12 and 3, which won 12 out of 15 basketball games, which is an 80% win percentage. So although Villanova would love a Providence loss and a Villanova win, um, they would still not be in first place. Providence would still have that first place locked up, but they would they would uh get closer and they do play Providence next week. So that'll be an interesting game moving forward. 
Obviously, Villano with a loss doesn't really do much because the closest team to them is Marquette, who doesn't have who has three less wins than them and two more losses than they do. So it's just not going to happen there on that count. Um, so who's playing? Uh, Seton Hall. Seton Hall is in a good spot. Uh, it's a bad spot, actually. You don't want to have to play Villanova. And if you beat Villanova, you can move to 7-6 and six and into a tie for sixth place with Xavier. Now, Xavier would have the tiebreaker because they, I mean, Xavier would have the tiebreaker because they've played one more game. They sit at 17-7 and seven with a win. You sit at 16-7. and seven. So regardless, Xavier will be in that spot, but you would be in a tie. It, it would fall to a tiebreaker instead of just having an overall record. Uh, Seton Hall with a loss could fall to six and seven. If St. John's wins against UConn on Sunday, then St. John's can tie Seton Hall. They would fall into, uh, they could fall into a tie for seventh place in the uh, Big East. That's Seton Hall for you. Butler, Butler's in a uh, bad spot, honestly. You, Butler with a win can move to five and nine, which it would be good, um, but they'd be two games in the loss column behind St. John's. Uh, Butler, if they lose this game, they could fall to four and ten. If DePaul wins, they would move to four and nine, and DePaul would pass Butler uh, for ninth place in the Big East. So that's the important factor in today's game. Butler's playing, obviously going to be rooting against DePaul later on that day against Providence. Um Ooh, who else do we need to talk about? We obviously have to talk about Marquette. Um, that's that's a big one. <laughs> uh, Marquette, with a loss, could fall to... With a win, obviously, they stay in third place. They're not moving closer to... They could get closer to Villanova, but they're not passing Villanova. Marquette, with a loss, on the other hand, would have won eight out of 14 basketball games, right? They will have a 57% win percentage. UConn, on the other hand would have a 7 out of 12, which would be a 58% win percentage. And UConn would move past Marquette, at least for the present being, into third place. So that's what's going on in the Big East. At uh, 1 o'clock, we have Rutgers, which is at 14 and 9, traveling to number 14, Wisconsin, which is at 19 and 4. Wisconsin favored by 8.5 points on FS1. Uh, 2.30, we have Indiana, which is at 16 and 7, traveling to number 17, Michigan State, which is at 17 and 6. Uh, what else on the Big Ten? We have 5 o'clock, we have number 16, Arizona, Ohio State, traveling, which is at 14 and 6, traveling to Michigan, which is at 13 and 9. Michigan actually fared by 2.5 points in that game on ESPN. Um, that's all we got in the Big Ten, but there's some pretty important Big Ten games, so let's get to talking about them. And they're, they are pretty interesting, because again... You have a two-way tie atop the Big Ten, and Wisconsin, with a win today, can move into first place. Wisconsin, with a loss, falls into tie for second with Purdue at 10-4. and four. Uh, Rutgers, with a win, can move to 9-5. and five. And if Ohio State is to lose their game against Michigan, Ohio State would fall to 7-5. and five. Rutgers would pass Ohio State and get into the fifth spot in the Big Ten, that's a that's a pretty important feat if you're Rutgers because you'd be just on the verge of breaking that barrier uh, against Michigan State. Also, with a Michigan State loss against, you know, who's Michigan State playing? Michigan State's playing, I'm missing, Michigan State is playing Indiana. So if, if Rutgers is to win, Ohio State and Michigan State are both to lose, Rutgers could conceivably get into the fourth spot in the Big Ten, which I, again, I'll say it again on this channel, is so coveted because you get the two-day bye and would only be one game back behind Purdue and possibly Wisconsin. So huge, huge game for Rutgers, and there's two other huge games to watch for Rutgers if you're a Rutgers fan. Uh, Indiana, on the other hand, Indiana with a win can move to eight and six. R if Rutgers is to lose their game against... So, like, that was the... Right side for Rutgers. If Rutgers is to lose the game, they fall to eight and six. If Michigan does beat Ohio State, they move to eight and five, right? They would pass. Let's talk about Michigan for a second. If Michigan is to win their game against Ohio State, they would pass Rutgers. If Rutgers was to lose and fall to eight and six, Michigan would be at eight and five. Uh, they would pass Ohio State, which would fall to seven and five. And if Michigan State was to lose their game, then Michigan could enter a tie for fourth place in the Big Ten. 
Uh, Rutgers could fall conceivably to eight and six. And if Indiana does pull off the upset against Michigan State, would be in a tie for seventh place in the Big Ten with Indiana. If Michigan is to lose, uh, Michigan could fall to seven and six in the Big Ten. And uh, in, if Indiana was to win their game, they would Michigan Indiana would pass Michigan, and Indiana would sit in seventh place. Michigan would sit in eighth place. Anyways, those are all the scenarios for the Big Ten. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the one team we got in the American playing, and that's going to be uh, Houston. Houston obviously with a loss could fall to nine and two. And if, if SMU wins their game against East Carolina tomorrow, which is it's likely East Carolina is not one of the better teams in the American. Then uh, SMU could enter a tie for Houston with Houston for first place in the American, which would be a huge, huge victory for SMU, who's trying to make an at-large bid. Memphis, on the other hand, desperately needs a quality win on their resume. Again, as Memphis was a top twenty-five team, you could look at it and you could possibly see three American teams making this as an at-large bid. So it's kind of interesting, but this is a game Memphis desperately needs to pick up. They have the longest winning streak in the big, in the American. Uh, Memphis with a loss could fall to seven and five. Cincinnati plays Tulsa tomorrow. So if Cincinnati does win that game against Tulsa, they could move to seven and four and pass Cincinnati. And Temple plays Tulane tomorrow. And so if, conceivably, if, Temple and Cincinnati both win their basketball games, and Memphis loses it. Memphis could fall to fifth place in the American, and this is a likely scenario even because although Temple playing Tulane might be a close one, Cincinnati is likely to beat. Um, they're likely to beat uh, Tulsa tomorrow. So Tulsa's last place in the American, if you did not know that. Um, what else do we have? We have uh, the Ohio Valley Conference. High Valley Conference is ruled by Murray State, obviously, with a win or a loss or staying where they are. Moorhead State, on the other hand, would love to pick up a win. Um, they just lost to Belmont this week um, in a heartbreaker one-point loss. Um, but Belmont plays Southeast Missouri tomorrow, so that'll be interesting. Obviously, Moorhead State would be a pretty big Southeast Missouri fan. But if Moorhead State is to win their game and Belmont is to lose it, they can move into a uh, all by themselves in second place in the big um, the Ohio Valley Conference. Um, we also have the ACC. We'll talk about that for a hot second. Um, Duke is right now in a tie for first place with Notre Dame in the ACC. And Wake Forest is a game in the loss column back from Duke and Notre Dame. If Duke is to lose this game against uh, against Boston College, obviously Notre Dame would take the first place if they also win which Notre Dame plays Clemson tomorrow, so that's a likely scenario. Uh, they would enter a tie with Wake Forest, unless Wake Forest does play Miami tomorrow. So could conceivably, Duke, if Duke was to lose this game, Notre Dame could move into first place, and Wake Forest could move into a second place. Um, you could enter a tie with UNC if UNC also wins their game against Florida State tomorrow for third place in the ACC. So that's about as far down as Duke could fall. Obviously, big game for Boston College. They kind of need a victory desperately here. If Boston College does win this game and Louisville does not win, which Louisville's on the longest losing streak in the ACC at six, they play Miami um, on Wednesday. So they don't play this weekend. So if Boston College wins this game, they will at the very least be in ninth, uh, in 10th place for at least a couple days until Louisville plays Miami on Wednesday. So that's the interesting part about going on with Boston College. Boston College, obviously, with a loss, could fall behind Clemson if Clemson picks up the upset. If not, Boston College is not going to move. Um, that's basically what's going on in the ACC. Um, let's travel to the Pac-12, and then we got to go to the West Coast Conference. And then I can finally give you... I'm sorry, this, I swear, videos like this take forever. So we have two games going on in the Pac-12. 5 o'clock, we know for Arizona, which sits at 21-2. and two, Traveling to Washington, which sits at 13-9. and nine. Arizona favored by 14 half points on the Pac-12 network. And at 9 o'clock, we have number 12 UCLA, which is at 17 and 4. Traveling to number 21 USC, which UC, uh, which sits at 20 and 4. UCLA favored by 2 points on ESPN. So, 
Arizona with a win or loss are not going to move, right? Now, the interesting thing is for Washington, Washington with a win can move to 9 and 4, which would be the same record as USC. So they'd be tied with USC for at least a little bit, right? Uh, but then USC plays UCLA. Now, if USC loses to UCLA, which is the ideal scenario for you if you're a Washington fan and you somehow upset Arizona, um, then you can move past USC, which would then sit at nine and five. You would sit at nine and four. And Oregon plays Cal tomorrow. If somehow Cal pulls off the upset against Oregon, then Washington could move into a tie for third place in the Pac-12. Now, Washington with a loss could fall to eight and five which isn't a devastating blow, but uh, Washington State has won 7 out of 11 basketball games, which is a 63% win percentage. Now, if Washington loses, they will have won 8 out of 13 basketball games, which is a 61% win percentage. That would put them below Washington State. So Washington State would love a Washington loss, not only because they're their rival, but they would actually move up a spot with a Washington loss. i just explain to you what happens with a USC loss. Uh... A USC win and a UCLA loss could move Oregon into second place in the Pac-12. If Oregon beats Cal, they could move to 10-3, and three, and UCLA could fall to 9-4, and four, and USC could move to 10-4. and four. So if UCLA is to lose to USC, UCLA could fall into fourth place in the Pac-12, and USC with a win a, and an Oregon loss can move into second place in the Pac-12. I hope you guys understood that. <laughs> That's basically what's going on in the Pac-12. And then finally, the West Coast Conference. We obviously only have one game going on there, but it's a pretty significant one. Uh, Gonzaga is playing St. Mary's. This is about the closest team in skill level you have to Gonzaga in the conference. Still 16.5 point underdogs, but St. Mary's is not a bad basketball team. They're a top 25 team. So this is at least going to be an interesting basketball game. Now, obviously, Gonzaga with a win does not move, and Gonzaga with a loss obviously still does not move. Uh, the only thing that could be interesting is if St. Mary loses, that's the likely scenario, by the way, and Santa Clara does beat San Fran, which isn't insanely implausible because San Fran, uh, San Fran is a pretty good basketball team, right? Uh, but if Santa Clara beats, uh, San Francisco and St. Mary's loses to Gonzaga, St. Mary's would then suddenly be in a tie for second place with Santa Clara. Anyways, that's what's going on in the West Coast Conference. I hope you guys have stayed this long, uh, but it's time for my personal upset of the day, and I'm going to go with a not not exactly insane pick, but also not an exactly easy pick, right? If you were going to go with an easy pick, probably would go Michigan over Ohio State, um, but I'm going to go with a team I have a lot of faith in. Obviously, Michigan wouldn't be a bad choice either, considering they're coming off a pretty substantial win over against Purdue, but... I'm going to go with Texas. Texas is a team I have a lot of faith in. I understand Baylor is a really good basketball team, but if we're going to go by teams I have more faith in, I mean, Ohio State's a really good basketball team too. I have more faith in Texas to pull off an upset than I do in Michigan. Michigan has obviously been playing well as of late, um, but I'm, I've got to go with I've got to go with the Longhorns on this one. I think they're a better basketball team, and I think I think they have a legitimate chance of going on the road and pulling off the upset. Hey everybody, this is GGB saying adios, amigos. Please, oh please, Longhorns win this one.